Neanderthals, also known as Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, were a late surviving archaic human group who lived in Europe until 40,000 years ago. The last Neanderthals of Europe found themselves trapped in a tightening vice of extinction. To the east and south, modern humans, armed with a new toolkit, advanced through Germany, while to the west, they had already crossed into England, sealing off escape routes. Hemmed in between these fronts, the Neanderthals of Goye Cave in Belgium were pushed into an ever-narrowing corridor of survival, their hunting grounds shrinking and their social bonds fraying. At Goye Cave, this pressure erupted into consuming their own kind, and breaking of bones for marrow, stark signs of conflict. Together, the evidence from this site captures the grim reality of a people cornered, caught in a trap where conflict, hunger, and encroaching modern humans left no way out. It is tempting to imagine the final Neanderthals fading quietly into the cold winds of Europe, overwhelmed by forces of nature and time. Yet the evidence from Belgium tells a more brutal story, one of conflict, competition, and displacement. Around 45,000 years ago, modern humans armed with innovative tools, including bows and arrows, began to spread across Europe. Their arrival coincides with signs of ecological pressure, demographic expansion, and the shrinking territories of Neanderthal populations who had once dominated the region. Some of these Neanderthals, driven from their homelands in German, migrated west into Belgium. There, at the site of Goye Cave, they met a grisly fate. Their bones, cut, fractured, and even reused as tools, provide clear testimony that they were consumed. Based on the type of technique used, the perpetrators were other Neanderthals, and the larger context suggests this was part of a broader story of displacement, a desperate struggle on the very eve of Neanderthal extinction. The evidence tells us that this Neanderthals wasn't an isolated late survival tactic, but part of their behavioral repertoire stretching deep into their history. Imagine a clan of Neanderthals driven from central Germany after losing access to their hunting grounds. They follow the Loire northward, carrying what they can, hunting reindeer along the riverbanks. They move westward, crossing the modern boundary between Deutschland and Belgium, perhaps encountering signs of strangers. New hunting tools unlike their own. Tension rises as food becomes scarcer. Eventually, they move into central Belgium, only to arrive in the territory of another Neanderthal group, or perhaps Homo sapiens already pressing into the region. In the dark chambers of Goyer, their bones tell us how the journey ended, butchered, marrow cracked, even recycled as tools. The bones make clear that the Goyer Neanderthals were consumed by other humans rather than animals. But were those humans other Neanderthals, or were they Homo sapiens? This remains an open question. The archaeological layers containing the victimized Neanderthals are associated with Mousterian artifacts, traditionally linked to Neanderthals. The modern human remains found at Goye date much later, to around 35,000 years ago. On this basis, the safest conclusion is that the victims were eaten by Belgium Neanderthals, local groups turning on German Neanderthals. An isotopic study of Neanderthals from the cavern of Goye provides a startling window into this movement. By analysing sulphur isotopes in their bones, researchers discovered that some of the Neanderthals at Goye did not match the local ecological signature of Belgium. Instead, their isotopic values pointed to the geology of Grotte du Docteur at Houcorn, about 40 kilos northeast of Goye on the Outre-Condros Plateau. Local fauna and the local Neanderthals at Goye show isotopic values around 7 to 8 percent. Values significantly higher, 9 to 13 percent, are interpreted as non-local, matching geology further east. This would be one to two days of movement for a mobile Neanderthal group, well within realistic raiding, scouting or territorial conflict range, and consistent with the isotope evidence indicating non-local but not distant. This range perfectly fits the behavioural pattern seen at Goye, far enough to register a different sulphur isotopic signal, close enough for repeated contact, hostility or targeted raids, consistent with intergroup competition rather than random migration. The modus operandi at Goye points very strongly to a single short-lived episode 
not repeated events over generations. When you line up all the signals from the study, they converge on a brief event, likely perpetrated by a very small group of Neanderthals at Goye. A small raiding party of maybe two or three Neanderthal hunters could surprise a lone female in the forest and carry her off without being detected. The evidence suggests the victims were taken one by one, and their bones suggest a very orderly end, rather than desperation. The Goye site is one of the most chilling in Neanderthal history. Excavations revealed six Neanderthals, including four young adult females, a child and an infant, all dated to around 40,000 years ago, whose bones bore unmistakable signs of cut marks. This is not a random pattern. It shows deliberate selection of younger females and their children. Goyed Q376 was a ten-year-old Neanderthal child whose bones show clear-cut marks and percussion marks. This child was one of the Neanderthals also identified as having undergone marrow extraction. In the ancient DNA work, Q376 stands out because it gave one of the clearer signals of Neanderthal ancestry distinct from Spy Cave. Goye Q305 is one of the most important Goye Neanderthal samples because her DNA was fully sequenced. Goye Q305's bones were found with cut marks and evidence of marrow extraction, just like other German Neanderthals. Cut marks trace the slicing away of meat from bone. Percussion fractures show deliberate breaking of long bones to extract marrow. Ribs bear evidence of dismemberment of the thoracic cage. Some bones were even recycled as retouchers, used to sharpen stone tools after their nutritional value had been stripped away. In every sense, the Goye Neanderthals were processed like prey animals. The skeletal representation, dominated by tibias and femurs lacking extremities, mirrors the treatment of horses and reindeer found in the same deposits. However, this activity among Neanderthals is not unique to Goye. Sites in other regions have also yielded evidence of butchery. But Goye is distinctive in its context. The isotopic data show a clear division between local Goye Neanderthals and the victims. The Goye Neanderthals used more traditional Musterian stone tools, but the Neanderthals of Germany used a more advanced tool set. The Kielmesser group is not a local industry of Belgium or the Goye Caves. It represents a far broader Middle Paleolithic technological tradition that stretched across a wide corridor of Central and Eastern Europe during the later Neanderthal period, primarily between roughly 100,000 and 40,000 years ago. The Kielmesser group is defined by the production of asymmetrical bifacial knives known as Kielmesser heavy, plano-convex tools with a straight-backed edge and a sharp working edge, often reworked repeatedly over long-use lives. These were not casual flakes, but curated, multifunctional tools, indicating mobile Neanderthal groups with a high investment in tool longevity. The Goye Caves in Belgium sit on the extreme western edge of this technological sphere. Rather than being a core Kielmesser centre, Goye represents a contact zone or peripheral extension. This suggests Neanderthals in Belgium were not isolated but interacting, directly or indirectly, with populations from the Central European Corridor. In this sense, Goye is evidence of technological diffusion rather than origin. It marks where the Kielmesse tradition attenuates as one moves toward the Atlantic fringe. Why did they leave Germany for Belgium? The most likely explanation is the pressure of Homo sapiens expansion. The western Germany-Belgium region is so dense with caves and shelters that it has often been called the Neanderthal Refuge. The limestone geology creates countless caves and rock shelters, which preserve both bones and artifacts exceptionally well. As modern humans established themselves in Europe, Neanderthals were squeezed out of their traditional hunting territories. Forced migrations would have been a natural response, a search for new lands where resources were more plentiful and competitors less numerous. But as these exiled groups travelled into Belgium, they encountered other Neanderthals, perhaps locals at Spy Cave and Goye, and possibly even early Homo sapiens already pushing into the region. Their arrival was not met with hospitality. Within weeks of their arrival they were dead. Yet the broader context complicates this picture. The displacement of Neanderthals suggests that their encounters with Homo sapiens were not benign. If modern humans were present in Belgium at the time, 
they could have been the perpetrators at Goye, but tool marks indicate this was done by other Neanderthals. Modern humans reached Europe much earlier than once thought. The classic model placed their arrival around 40,000 years ago, sweeping across the continent in the Aurignacian expansion that followed the Neanderthal collapse. But a series of discoveries has pushed that date back. Fossils from Rannis, Germany, dated to at least 45,000 years ago, show that Homo sapiens had already penetrated deep into the continent as early as 49,000 years ago. The archaeological record reveals blade and point technologies that are associated with Homo sapiens, not Neanderthals. This timing places modern humans squarely in England, Germany and France as the Neanderthals were making their last stand. Indeed, a 50,000-year-old carved bear bone found in Germany may have been made by Neanderthals, indicating a capacity for artistic expression, though the date overlaps modern human presence. These early Homo sapiens were not just different in appearance. They brought with them cultural and technological systems that altered the balance of survival. They built broader social networks, exchanged materials over long distances, and produced ornaments and symbolic objects. Crucially, they appear to have carried with them new tools. Evidence from Grotte Mandrin in southeastern France suggests that bow and arrow technology may have been present by at least 55,000 years ago. While Homo sapiens were advancing into Eastern Europe, Neanderthals still held sway in the West. The Goye region had been Neanderthal territory for hundreds of thousands of years. These regions were rich in game. Reindeer, horses, mammoths and bison roamed the steppe-like landscapes, while caves provided shelter. The archaeological record shows Neanderthals here had developed efficient hunting strategies, targeting prime-aged reindeer and carefully processing carcasses for marrow and hides. The story of the Neanderthals at Goye is thus best understood in the wider frame of competition and displacement. In Germany, Neanderthals faced growing pressure from incoming Homo sapiens armed with new technologies and expanding populations. The ecological niches that had sustained Neanderthals for millennia began to erode. Mammoth and reindeer, the staples of Neanderthal diets, were now hunted not only by them but by the newcomers. As game became scarcer and hunting grounds more contested, some Neanderthal groups were forced to abandon their homelands. The journey northward into Belgium was an attempt at survival. But arrival in a new land brought them into conflict with local Neanderthal groups. Whether the events at Goye was driven by hunger, warfare or ritual, its victims were the displaced groups. Their fate highlights the brutal social dynamics of the period, communities under pressure. But Goyet Cave is not an isolated case. The broader record of late Neanderthal sites shows growing diversity in treatment of the dead. At Spy Cave, only a short distance from Goyet, Neanderthals were buried without signs of being consumed. This variation reflects a time of crisis. As Neanderthals faced ecological stress, shrinking territories, and competition from Homo sapiens, their behaviours became more variable, even desperate. The events at Goye thus embodies both the uniqueness and the desperation of Neanderthals at the end. It was not their universal practice, but rather a symptom of a population under extraordinary pressure, fragmented into small, vulnerable groups. In this context, the arrival of modern humans, with larger populations, broader networks and superior toolry, proved overwhelming. Researchers successfully extracted nuclear DNA from the Goyet Q56 specimen, a right femur belonging to a female Neanderthal. When compared to other Neanderthals with available nuclear DNA, Goyet Q56 shows the closest genetic relationship to Spy 94A from Spy Cave also in Belgium, but clusters most strongly with Q374, a female child about seven years old. Goyet Q56 and Q374 represented by a partial jawbone, may have even been mother-child or aunt-niece, though the data isn't fine-grained enough to prove that. However, the local Goyet and Spy Cave Neanderthals were not among the victims. By 39,000 years ago, the last Neanderthals had disappeared from Western Europe, except possibly in Iberia. Their final refuges may have been in southern Iberia and isolated pockets elsewhere, but the archaeological record becomes sparse. In their place, Homo sapiens spread across the continent, carrying with them the Aurignacian culture, symbolic art, 
and a rapidly expanding population. The replacement was swift in evolutionary terms, occurring within a few millennia of first contact. The bones at Goye, however, remind us that extinction was not a passive process. It was a struggle marked by conflict and human-on-human -human predation. Neanderthals were not simply erased by climate or chance. They were pushed, displaced, and sometimes consumed. Their end was written in the expansion of our own species, armed with technologies and strategies that reshaped the human world forever. The story of the Goye Neanderthals offers a unique window into the final chapter of Neanderthal life. Isotopes reveal their origins in Germany, from which they were displaced by the expansion of modern humans into Europe by 45,000 years ago. Their remains, butchered and consumed in Belgium, tell of a grim encounter, outsiders falling victim to conflict and consumption. Whether consumed by local Neanderthals or early Homo sapiens, their fate was sealed by the competition unleashed by the arrival of modern humans armed with new tools. This was not a gentle fading of a species, but a chaotic replacement, in which displacement and conflict played decisive roles. In the bones of the Goye victims, we see both the resilience and the vulnerability of Neanderthals. They carried with them the memory of their homelands in Germany, but in a world reshaped by new human arrivals, their exile ended in tragedy. Thank you for watching.